Hello? 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 Hey guys. Hey gamers. We're here. Oh, look we at did it. That. Look at that. We're live. We're live. Crazy. Crazy. <clears throat> Welcome to Dungeon Discourse, everybody. Uh, the show where we talk about our show. It's tagline <laughs> for you. Um, today, we have a special one because uh, we're going to be talking not necessarily about our main campaign. We're going to be talking about uh, our uh, past one shot that we did in the in, in style of or in, in the Witcher um, world and instead of having some core DS people that were there talk about their experience I figured it would be more fun to have our two guests talk about uh, their their experience and, and walk you know walk through their character creation a little bit and talk about some decisions they made answer some questions that got submitted or if they get put in chat as we go um, we'll happily answer those for you um so yeah, we're here. We got Denny. We got Ismera, whose name I'm still not fucking up, and I'm actually, you know, I'm, 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 I'm you know, good job, me. Um, also, you're, uh, Is Ismera, you're muted. <laughs> oh, or at least I can't hear you. Oh, me neither. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's nice. a live show, guys. Technical issues happen. We'll fix it in post. I right, it's for the YouTube, <laughs> I guess. Or not. The Bella's a pretty like Bella's a masochist. She just likes to see people suffer, so like she probably leaves the dudes in. Wow. Slander on your own cast. That is our friendship. Literally all of us. Just we just show our affection towards one another by just talking shit. We do. Your mic was working fine before before we went live. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Nope, still not a thing. Wait, can she hear us? Not if you can hear us. Okay. Okay. Just try quickly, just like in Discord settings, just try just like unselecting and selecting your mic or something. Sometimes that just kind of... Discord well, is, in... after all, a free piece of software that will just break for no reason at all. In the great rules of electronic technician work, if you try is, to uh, it off and on first again. thing, no upsetty, just resetty. Yeah. If you try turning it off and on again. Is it free though with <gasps> Nitro? Oh. oh, do you do? Oh yeah, Nitro, true. But was it just as simple as resetting your mic? And... Yeah, I have no idea why I had nice. to do that. Love that. <laughs> Love that but okay, you. thank you, Discord. <laughs> good shit, I good did shit. Making sure I'm awake, I guess. Yeah, I mean, hey. All right, we're here, cool. Uh, so like I said, we're, we're gonna be talking to uh, the two guest players to just have, have a bit, have a bit of discourse about their 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 experience, their um, opinions. Maybe they have some questions for me about the the one shot or just the campaign in general or or, or whatever it may be. You know the weather. I don't. We're just gonna be here talking for about an hour, an hour and a half about whatever we want to talk about, really. Um, <clears throat> So, before we get going, we are still, obviously it's still March, so there is still money being raised, so if, you know, you feel so inclined, uh, all the charity commands, so exclamation mark charity, exclamation mark rad, exclamation mark donate, they all work, there's a panel down below with some more information and all that good stuff. Other than that, I don't really have any, uh, any, any, uh, thing to really announce, so let's just get straight into it. Um... Last one shot, we, uh, we played a, we, we were in the world of The Witcher taking place roughly a year before the events of uh, The Witcher 3. Uh, a band of five witchers worked together to take down a threat um, unlike any threats seen before. Monsters that under normal circumstances would never cooperate were doing exactly that. Uh, tearing up uh, the farming village of Yantra uh, a few hours east of the free city of Novigrad. You got recruited by Vernon Roach to check out what was going on and put a stop to it, and uh, you did. It's uh, pretty much the summary of uh, what happened. So, first things first, I'm the realist. Um, second thing I wanted to say is, uh, or ask, just both of you. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> or just any, I guess. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're almost getting to the questions, and she's like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Are you done with deck issues now? Are we good? Is that it's all? testing me. <laughs> I just wanted to switch to voice activity. 
Nice. And I hung up. Anyway, the first thing I wanted to ask uh, both of you is um, just how how was your overall experience uh, being being a guest on the channel and being able to play with uh, some people you you know don't don't really know as well as, as the usual people you play with if you play at all and just what was that experience like? You know, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Danny. Sure. I mean, uh, it was it was a great time. It was fun getting to like play with you guys and like I've known quite a few of you for like years now. Like Laura, Laura and I went to school together, and uh, over the years, like um, I know, um, kind of through Laura, I started watching Dungeon Select and uh, and, and like I admired you guys from afar for quite some time, and eventually started my own thing. Got you guys on the show, and started to get to know you guys better. So it's fine. It's nice that I finally got to play with you guys. Yeah. And also, uh, Ismaira, we I, we just met before mm -hmm. while we were setting this all up. And yeah, you you were a natural fit into all this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's it, for me. It's always. As a DM, I have real like real significant like significant like imposter syndrome. I I always feel like I'm what I'm doing is not good enough. And as soon as like somebody who semi kind of sort of knows their way around DMing, I'm like, oh fuck, I'm gonna fuck. They're gonna realize I'm a fucking fraud, you know. <laughs> uh, and um, so <clears throat> I've gotten over because we've been doing Dungeon Select for three, yeah, over three years now. Jesus, over three years now. Um, I've gotten, you know, used to that and gotten over that with the core crew, but every time I invite guests on, I'm like, fuck, shit, fuck, you know? So, um, I was, I was, I was nervous as shit before we started. Once I, like, get into it, it's like, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, the first few minutes, I'll be like, oh, and then I get into my, like, DM brain, and I'm like, you know, fucking, let's just fucking get the show going. Uh, get in the zone. And, yeah, and then afterwards. DM zone. Afterwards, when I'm, when I hang up the call, I'm like, oh, God, but, um. <clears throat> yeah, it's just um, it's just something I struggle with, and I have always struggled with, and probably will always struggle with, because it's just something that uh, that uh, I don't know, I don't know why. It's just a thing that that happens, and uh, gotten used to the feeling, so it's whatever, I guess. Um, well, I I know <clears throat> I totally know what you mean to like, uh, and and you mentioned this in our our, our uh, Discord chat there. Yeah. Um, after after the one shot, and I was just like, yo, man. I totally get it, like, as a DM myself, same situation. Like, it's totally different when you're, like, DMing for, like, a group of friends. But the fact that we also do it as, like, a show, mm -hmm. like, there's another level of pressure there. Yeah, and absolutely. it's like, am I the one that's qualified to make this entertaining for a wider audience? It's, yeah, it's yeah. a thing to grapple with for sure. <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. Um, but, yeah, it was really cool to just, I always, um, like, I, I, I adore you know you and and your your you know the, the Dicely crew, uh, all fucking phenomenal people, who which I don't get to hang out with and watch the show enough for more as much as I would want to because, you know, busy people and all that stuff. Um, got a lot of shit on my plate, but every time I do have like interaction with you or anyone that is uh, you know associated with that with that crew of people, it's, it's always great. It's always fucking you know super chill vibes, awesome people. Um, and I definitely hope to get more of, of your, uh, of your, of your, of your gang gang to be, you know, appearing on, on one shots or, or on the show proper or whatever it may be. Uh, because it's a great gang of people you got collected around you, Denny. So, you know, good job. How did you do that? Because I have a bunch of fucking idiots around me. So... <laughs> As as I understand it, you guys you guys were part of a larger community and you guys yeah. kind of found each other. I handpicked my crew. <laughs> see, see, mate, yeah, fair. I was yeah, because when uh, we're all part of um... Wait, you got you guys are all lovely people though. And um, <laughs> also, I I don't want to whiz by this, uh, but uh, Beanie's saying Yuzmir is a little loud in the stream. Yeah, I've not already, that I've she's already, been, um... not that we've let her have a moment to talk no, yet. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I've already turned it down. Turn it down a little bit. So uh, we should be good. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, like the the way we kind of got started was uh, it's, it's, I haven't told the backstory in a while. It's been a while. Is um, we are like me and Bora, we are uh, founders of a community called Level Select together with a handful of other people. Uh, and what basically what it was is we kind of when you look on Twitch, especially because we're, we're all streamers, we all we all come from a streaming background, a variety of different games and styles. But we're all to our core, we like playing video games and have people watch, right? And a lot of things you see on Twitch is like. 
people that set up these communities that are all about like you know oh we just want to grow together but it's always this like dumb fucking like pyramid scheme of like oh only the people in charge get to grow the rest of you guys who gives a shit and we were just like how about we just uh make a community and kind of like introduce our communities to each other not with the intent to grow but just have people meet other cool people that have a similar mindset so that they can you know play games with each other and, and do that um and it, it, it has grown over the years to the point where we do have like a streamer roster and then and, and people but the way we kind of select our streamers is not like there's no like real requirements it's just are you an active member in the community and do you put in the effort to like mingle and make friends and and leave a positive impact not necessarily in our streams but in the discord at least like do you actually interact with each other and stuff that's really the own like prerequisite that you have to meet i guess um so when i started dungeon select um i just put a message in there and i was like hey uh i want to try making a DD show looking for players uh who's down to clown really um and like i knew laura a little bit when we started uh but not really um the only person on the crew that i like have known for years before that were soko and duke bell i had never met before koiba never really met before um and then bd came in as, as someone who knew laura if i'm remembering correctly and then <clears throat> I heard he he was also uh, you know he he has DM experience and, and likes D and D, and then we were like oh you know he he can guess I guess and then fucking Duke had to step out of the campaign uh, for a while, so Beanie kind of stuck. But I, like uh, back then, I also similar to like uh, I didn't know Ismera until literally uh, when we made that group DM, and it's kind of similar as how DS started. We, I didn't, I only knew two of the players. The other four, I got to know through the game, which was great. It's great people, and uh, I'm proud to say that they are probably the closest friends I have because of this, uh, this whole, like, project, which is, you know, this is about as wholesome as I get, because this is, I'm giving them ammo right now <laughs> by kissing what? their ass. It's, it's probably also because they're not here to actually vocally retort. I, I know mean, that's yeah. kind of <laughs> how you guys as friends operate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. But uh, yeah, so dude, I don't even know how I got on this tangents, but here we are. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Ismera, how did yes. you experience your, you know, being, being, like just joining this group of people who you didn't really know and playing D&D, &D, which is also definitely something that you know, role-playing and getting into character is pretty, you know, a little scary, right? Especially if it's around people that you don't know, adding the fact that it will also be streamed, right? So, like, I I'm curious to, like, your thought process and how you experience that. Yeah, well, my cat is really enjoying this, um, <laughs> as I think you can hear. Um, <laughs> but, no, I was really excited. I had been telling anyone that would listen how much I miss D&D &D and how much I wanted to play and stuff, because... I was telling y'all during the session that I used to um, play in person pretty consistently with some Navy friends and our DM was so cool. Like she made these maps and stuff like she wanted to actually set up her TV so that like it would be a screen like a map for us to play on, you know, like cool. laying flat on the table for us to move our pieces on and everything <laughs> and have like, I don't know, like lights and stuff. It was really cool. but. Um, the campaign ended up ending pretty abruptly because of some stuff that happened with her family. Um, so it was just unfortunate. But, you know, we would, like, have queso and mead <laughs> and pizza. Like, it was so cool. Um, and I really missed the in-person aspect. Like, we would we started doing campaigns on Fantasy Grounds and stuff after that. Um, and then, especially during the pandemic, we, of course, had to not play in person. And... They would just fall apart because schedules mm -hmm. like some of our friends moved out of state and stuff it was just tough to like keep them going um so i and i love like i love rolling physical dice and stuff and having my paper character sheet and all that i don't know i sound like <laughs> one of those like back in my day it was back paper books you know day. but like i really like i'm a very tactile person like index cards are how i study like i need that writing stuff down and that like feeling 
stuff, <laughs> I mm -hmm. guess. Um, so I really missed that. And I was really excited, like, when you mentioned that we were going to be using physical dice. I was like, yes, I get to get my dice out, yeah. you know? So it's, it's something that, I, that I've always, that we've done from the beginning is, like, we all love the idea of rolling dice and yeah as a DD player i feel like you naturally kind of become a dice collector because you're like oh that one that's a cool looking set so i'm gonna buy that and then before you know it you have like yeah. 20 sets sitting there and you're like oh i don't have a problem this is not a problem this is okay <laughs> no. this is fine i need all of these i don't stop looking at me why are you looking at me it's normal <laughs> you know so yeah um... tell me about it <laughs> exactly yeah, I, exactly. I know that if if I continue playing with y'all, I am going to become an avatar of Laura Bailey. Like it, <laughs> you uh, there's no escaping it. We have Koiba, who has a literal duffel bag full of dice. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, I hope to rival that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's uh, so I've always told my players: if you want to use digital dice rollers, fucking knock yourselves out. You know, do what you want to do. But if you want to roll physical dice absolutely hell yeah do it because that's what yeah, i do and yeah. i i'm not gonna sit there and be like oh yeah oh this person has rolled very high this session are they cheating like no because like it, most of the fun during dnd comes from fucking up rolls that leads to some yeah. hilarious oh, yeah. moments failures like, can be the best part easily moments so like it's great so i have full confidence that all my players you know they know what none of them fudge their rolls so like I mean, it, why you know I mean? would you want to crit every time? How boring. Yeah. You know, mm. you gotta, like, stub your toe somehow pulling out your longbow. Or, like, you know, you have to just fuck up because it's just, it's just so much better that way. You know? Yeah, exactly. I, I'm one of those people, like, <coughs> there's all kinds of discourse about what is canon and what can't be canon in, like, ESO lore and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those people that's very firmly, like... There's no way in a real world of, like, different types of elves and different types of humans that they don't mix and intermingle. There's just no way, if we're to believe that this world is real, that non-canon stuff doesn't happen, you yeah. know? So I'm kind of like, that's kind of how I feel about crit fails and crit successes it's like there's no way you wouldn't have something really badass happen or like try to do something really badass and just fail spectacularly like i, I think that's part of the fun of it you know yeah no absolutely um <clears throat> but yeah it's uh, i had a really good time uh getting mm -hmm. to uh, like play with you guys or like dm for you guys i guess um uh, you're playing too <laughs> yeah, yeah you're yeah. a player too it's, dm's a player I, too I, yeah, no, they are, but like definitely in a, like a different, different way, right? Like you get to play even more characters than we do. Like uh, uh, most, like as a DM, I feel like you're like you're you're like forty percent playing, forty percent referee, and twenty percent just projecting all of your issues on your players to make yourself feel better. <laughs> uh. I feel like as an altaholic, DMing is my dream, especially because I love to write. My issue is, I have never tried world building, and I think that would be where mm. my challenge I, uh, came in. I was on a podcast. But stories, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a podcast uh, with a certain uh, Danny Dicely uh, about, oh. <laughs> about world building. On this very topic. Uh, on this very topic, yeah, about world building with a, a couple of other DMs, and we just kind of talked about how we do approach those things, and it's, uh, it's a good time. A good time. Good talks. And it was fun, because like everybody there had a different approach to things or like did things in a different order which is very like very insightful i feel like it's because everybody mm -hmm. kind of does you know you build a world there's a, a billion different aspects to world building um and everybody kind of goes at it in their own at their own pace but also in their own mm -hmm. order like it's very cool and it's very broad but like th that also makes it so that there is no there you cannot do it wrong you know what i mean right right because at the end of the day it doesn't exist you're the one in charge, mm -hmm. so whatever you say or want goes because it's your world. Why wouldn't it, you know? I think that's one of my favorite parts about d d is, like, at the end of the day, it doesn't exist. But at the same time, everything in it is real. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you are experiencing those things along with your character, you know? It might be in your head, but, like, does that make it less real? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think that's kind of the fun about streaming it as well is because it, mm -hmm. it's not it's now now it's something that doesn't only exist in the head of you and your players it also exists in like the heads of the people that, that, that watch and um <clears throat> it's cool as fuck any 
anyway, <laughs> we were talking about the one shot, right? The Witcher. So, um, <laughs> just I that was the first question. I will wax poetic about fantasy all day. So yeah, I mean, I can talk about fucking D and D and all that stuff <laughs> for literal days. So. I kind of got to keep myself on the rails a little bit for this because I, I try to limit these episodes to be like an hour and 90 minutes long because it's just, you know what I mean? Um, but um, I have a question regarding your, uh, you know, you stepped into this, you, you made a character. And I know that maybe both of you, but maybe maybe just Denny, but I, I forget your experience. Maybe both of you, I think both of you, without really knowing anything about The Witcher, really. Except for like the show, I guess. I feel like that's something both of you may have maybe like a little bit sort of kind of introduced to The Witcher through. How did you prepare? Like, what did you do any like research before you started like making your characters or? He's married. So... You can go first this one. There you go. <laughs> uh, so actually, I was introduced to it by like you know i would see my partner playing he plays way more games than i do i don't know how he balances them i can't do it i'm so invested in my eso lore i cannot do another mmo i can barely do animal crossing with it like it's <laughs> i have over 40 eso characters so That's... like and they all have lore <laughs> so Man. um so i would watch him i would see him playing witcher and i'm like what is this? You know, like, because what struck me first was he played Witcher 3. That was the first I had seen it. And that game is beautiful. Yeah. So, really you know, I would game. get entranced watching it. He's like, check out this sunset over this pond. And it's just gorgeous, you know. And, you know, it's almost like watching a movie because of the length of the cutscenes and stuff and like just the drama of it. So it was really cool experiencing it that way. And he like he took his headphones out and like let me hear everything as it was happening and stuff like with him um so it was pretty cool doing that and then we watched the show when it came out and then um we which i yeah we finished the second season um and then we also um on the way i i went out to california for six months it's where i'm from um my parents had gotten a divorce and stuff i wanted to be there for my sisters so i went to school out there for six months and he drove back with me um, when I came back to Georgia and we listened to the Witcher audiobooks on the way back. So nice. I've kind of read the books, but like, that's not for me. Listening is not a good way to consume literature. <laughs> um, again, with the holding of a book and yeah. like reading it for myself, you know, um, but it was still, it was cool. It was like, oh, wow, they really change all that much from the books, you know, in the movie or in the show and stuff. So um, I thought that was cool. But yeah, so I, I didn't know enough, like. I don't know how much you got to like read our backstories and stuff before, especially I know mine was long, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name like I didn't name my Witcher <clears throat> trainer. I don't see and like I don't even know if there's like a word for that, but <laughs> I didn't name him because I was like, maybe he could be someone cool that I don't know about. I didn't name the town she was from because I have no idea of the infrastructure of like any of the places. Very, in like, the Witcher very, world like, that I also European, don't know the name of. Uh, so <laughs> I just left everything nameless, you know, but yeah, so it was, I didn't know anything about School of the Cat either. I didn't know that they were also assassins. I just story. knew they were cats and cats are technically sneaky. So I could play her maybe kind of roguelike. Um, but yeah, I, I knew next to nothing. I just was like, let me make my character cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, fair. And I attempted to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you did a good job. And it, it, the, what I what, what struck me was that like everybody, because on paper, witchers are all very sameish. Uh, you know, they're 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 mutants. They all have like the cat like 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 you know like uh, vertical like slits in their eyes and bright colors. Uh, people fucking despise them. Uh, they say witchers are emotionless. That's not entirely true, but like. It Human. helps with, like, the the image of, like, oh, I'm yeah. a badass monster slayer. I don't give a fuck about your feelings. Um, but you all definitely were able to give your characters your own, like, twist or your own, like, like, like flavor to it. Uh, where, where you played this very, like, quiet and, and shy, little socially awkward, like, like, tiny witcher. And then there's 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 Koiba who played like just a very stereotypical brutish dumb man, 
Um, <clears throat> or that's, don't get me started about Laura's fucking monstrosity with. with oh my god, I loved that <laughs> so much. Um, but yeah, so like, it's really cool to see that even though um, you were pretty limited when it comes to your character creation, normally I'm all about like, just do whatever the fuck you want, right? But because of the, the fact that we were doing a Witcher themed thing, character creation was a bit more limited to like, you have to be human, you have to play the Witcher class. Right. Uh, but like, you know, def everybody definitely got the assignment and made it their own, uh, creating for a cast of five pretty different characters, even though they were all at, at core the same fucking thing. Um, Denny, how did you uh, prepare yourself? Um, mostly I uh, and I typically how I go about character <clears throat> creation is I'll start with the mechanics and then kind of become inspired and create the story based on like what it is I want to build. Um, and so when when we were choosing our different subclasses, I ended up with the Griffin, which was a more magic based um, mm -hmm. school of witchers. I was like, hell yeah, I'm feeling wizardy, but I get to use a sword too. I didn't yeah. use my sword. Well, that's not true, but um, <laughs> and so yeah. Yeah, so I started building them on D&D &D Beyond, and of course, since this is like a homebrewed class, I was like, I'm going to have to figure out how to make take which class base I took fighter, and then kind of build all the other Witcher features through items, so I could just make it easy on D&D &D Beyond. Um, and once that was all kind of figured out, I was like, all right, let's do some research here. So I went and I learned about the Griffin School, because like you said, I, I pretty much don't have any experience with The Witcher other than the first season of the Netflix show. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I went and learned and I found out like that they are they were kind of one of the more respected schools, like they're taught in like etiquette. Um, I found out that the trials for each of the different schools were different, so I found out that bit about getting a getting a griffin egg or reciting this entire book and nobody goes for the book. So I did the griffin egg as well. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and I just like kind of delved into the lore of like, what is the, what is the history? What is the map? Um, how did monsters and magic get into this world? I, I, I did some, uh, some quick research, but I felt like I was able to quickly get into the universe. Like it felt pretty seamless as far as like, fantasy settings go yeah and uh the cool thing about the witcher for me is that um it's definitely high fantasy but all of the like monsters and stuff you'll come across or most of them are all like based on like eastern european folklore um, i loved that so much when i found that out I yeah thought that was because so cool. uh, the witcher books were written by a a, a polish author um the company CD Projekt Red that makes the Witcher games are based in Poland and a lot of the like lore and stuff is all based on that like Eastern European uh, a lot of the the, the the infrastructure a lot of the um, architecture is all very Eastern European so that and and it's cool to see kind of them, them instead of like really just going all out and completely thinking up all of these new things they just take like oh you know things like um, drowners for instance is a very common monster in in the witcher games and you find them all over the fucking place every time there's a body of water there'll be drowners around it which are basically like the ghosts of drowned uh pe people that drowned in said body of water and now they're just like these vengeful spirits in this like weird like fishy fucking monster form and they just kill whatever walks too close to the waterline um and it's it's, it's it, uh, because of the fact that it's like the same as like you know I'm also a really big sucker for um, uh, like the, the Brothers Grimm and their like uh, stories and monsters and whatnot. I I, I I eat that shit up. I fucking love that shit because it's also all um, like loosely based on just folklore that has been around forever in in you know the, whatever culture that that story is from. Um, Witcher is like an Eastern European baby of the shows Grimm and Supernatural. <laughs> and I love I that. I <laughs> love Grimm so much. Grimm is yeah, great. Yeah, it was so fun. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, but yeah, plus Eastern European folklore is just is just sick. It's cool. It's cool as fuck. It's, it's super dark. It's super gritty. And uh, I don't know. Because a lot of the like Disney early like disney movies are also like a couple of them are based on like stories that are from that like area or like you know 
For instance, like mm -hmm. The Little Mermaid is it has yep. a much darker, like grim Ooh. fucking like ending and stuff, and it's really like it's it, I, I I eat that shit up. I could I could talk or listen or or watch that shit all fucking day. It's great. It's weird. I feel like we're a bunch of nerds that could just talk about our passions all day. <laughs> Me, a nerd? How dare you? Wow. Coming Sorry. in here slinging Yeats. big words at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a bit of a problem. Because we got some questions submitted. Oh, okay. But my Discord is capturing the cameras, so I can't tab out. And my phone just oh. died. So if anyone would do me a favor and just like you know, go <laughs> to the Discord, and if you just want to read out the questions as we go, and you know we'll, we'll, we'll go through them that way, because I am I uh, I was prepared, and I thought my phone would have charged. I was like, ah, just fucking whip my phone out. It's not. It, it's not. I'm Great. a professional, um, guys. So I see two in the channel. <laughs> well, three. Yeah, Bella and, and Laura submitted questions. Yeah. So if either Denny or you want to just go go through them one by one and read them out and then, you know. All right, so... Or, or Laura what? posted a question, is posting a question in chat, actually. So there we go. Ooh, ooh. That, that works, that works. Um, Belle asked for the both of you what your favorite detail is about your characters that you made. I cede uh, the floor to you, Denny. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, very well. Um... <laughs> I, I think one of my favorite things about the character was I, I tried not to like dictate who the character was before we started playing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I approach characters. I like to learn who they are just spontaneously. Um, and this guy was like well-spoken, like very direct and uh, like tried to be respectable. Um, but one of the, one of the details that didn't come up because some things just aren't relevant. They don't come up. Was uh, he wore these like leather glove bracer type things, and underneath it, his hands were absolutely like scarred from fire. Like that was his big theme. Was like he was fire magic. He's been burnt by it. Now he keeps these gloves on to cover that over. Badass. Okay. It's Mara. Um. So. <laughs> It sort of came up, but didn't. Um, I didn't want to, like, outright say it when I was describing her. Um, because it's not something that you would know by looking at her. Um, but my youngest sister, um, she's 12. And she has selective mutism. Mm -hmm. um, so that is how I wrote R.E.M.Z. basically. That's why she was as quiet as she was and everything um partially from the trauma of watching her parents get murdered by ghouls when she was six but she was always she was very quiet before then too um there just wasn't that same like anxiety that self or that selective mutism brings with it um so that developed after the trauma and everything um and that actually is why like her bond with her trainer is so close like he was very very respectful and compassionate about that like after her parents uh died and he like left her little charm for her that was her like treasure to remind her of her parents as part of the urchin background um he didn't like he's a witcher he knew where she was hiding but he made it a point to like not look over there and to just like say if you want to come with me you should always remember where you came from and left the amulet or the the little charm you know and then went off and was like, if she's going to come with me, she's going to come with me. And she did. She snuck up onto his cart, which snuck onto his cart. <laughs> and he would just like not talk to her. He would just leave food for her along the journey and then like see that it was gone eventually, you know, and it was just, that was just kind of their thing. So it was just, yeah, a little piece that I put in there for my sister. <laughs> okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Beanie came up with a question spontaneously uh, for the both of you again. Is uh, what about some details about the other characters? Uh, what stood out to you? You know, what is your favorite detail about the other three characters and uh, about the monsters we fought? Any anything in particular that you were like, oh, that was very cool, or oh, I like that. Uh, Denny, first. Um, I. <laughs> I just loved how willing 
Koiba's character was to just like go and get himself killed. And yet it all perfectly worked <laughs> out for him. It she sure was did. like, oh, it, you know what? I, uh, I wouldn't have done that myself, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here to do that. Cause that was funny. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty great. Um, <laughs> and, and and it was interesting to interact with characters who were so, like, either soft-spoken or didn't really have too much, like, vocal presence. Like, Beanie's character just being very straight to the point, like, very few words, was like, I think my guy, like, really respects that. Like, he's just to the point, convey the information. Bingo. Um, and, and he was... And also Laura's character for you know being actually friendly it's like my guy's <laughs> like yeah i don't mind silence it's fine i've lived the life i've lived but this is like it's new it's kind of refreshing yeah i think um i liked the potential for friendship between remz and brianna especially after the fact because again remz is not the one that's gonna sit up here you know sit here and chat you up but I think if they had kept in touch via letter, yeah, Brianna definitely would have been blown away with how much REMZ had to say via writing. <laughs> so I think like that kind of probably would have been how they connected more. And I just, I love that idea because Brianna is just so like, hey, it's me, I'm a nice person, you know? And REMZ's like, okay, sure you are, but let me be in my corner, you know? <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, uh, I think just the, the, um, the whole, like, about Koiba's character, just the whole, like, he just mentioned that he smelled and looked dirty, and the fact that, like, that kind of stuck throughout, um, constantly got joked about, uh, <laughs> it, it, it took very little, like, it just, like, one mention was like, boom, done, that's gonna be called yep. back to for the rest of the fucking one shot, it's just... Yeah. By the way, you smell like shit. <laughs> oh, if it had been a campaign, it would have been a campaign long joke. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what about, like, the monsters you fought? Uh, because you, you, you fought a, a, a variety. Uh, some of the more, like, uh, classic um, Witcher monsters. Anything in particular that you were like, oh, that was pretty fucking badass, or that was cool, or... I was... I was excited that REMZ got to fight some some all ghouls. Um, I think that in her times where she would, you know, run off and hide at her witcher school and stuff, she definitely would have been studying up on them. Like if she were a ranger, all ghouls would be her favorite enemy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, so I think she definitely it was jarring for sure for her, but I think it also was like a cool moment of like okay, yeah, I can, I can take one down. I got this, you know, kind of reassurance for her. So it was an interesting emotional kind of duality there for her. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. And I think, I think I was a big fan of the, uh, the Leshy being present. Cause I, I feel like even, even before, like, since I didn't have any like Witcher exposure, I feel like that was the one creature I've seen in like Witcher art. And I was like, I wonder what that thing is. And then you kind of described it and it was like, oh, that has reputation to me. I know what that is. Yeah, it's pretty sure like, season two of The Witcher, the, the unless she becomes... Well, uh, spoilers, thanks. I mean, it's been out for so long. Come on. If you, I know, it's on. Get it together. Um, but now I've got something to look forward to. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm also a fan of like monsters having vulnerabilities. Like it's always so cool to just be like, they're resistant, they're immune, but also they're vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean... 50 big, times the damage. Big, big, tree, <laughs> so big tree, no like fire. Who'd have thought, huh? That's crazy. It's crazy mm. how that works. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> yeah, no, the, like the way The Witcher 3 especially uh, does it is like you have a bestiary, it's just, just like you all had, where you're like, you know, over t the idea is that over time, as you encounter more monsters, write about them, you learn about them, you, you get to know them more. And in The Witcher 3, there's like in the bestiary, there's like a whole, like, a whole thing of like lore on them and, uh, uh, their behavior, uh, every, like any, anything you think of lore-wise, it'll be there in the BCR, just in-game for you to read in your own time if you want to just have a read. That is um, so cool. But also like weaknesses, what sort of potions you can brew if you know you're going to fight one, uh, that sort of thing. It's very fuck. It's really fucking in-depth and it's really cool. And I definitely, um, 
<coughs> liked that. Like, I have this book. It's called The Book of Beautiful Horrors, I think it's called. It's just somebody out there on the interwebs was like, hey, I'm going to take all these Witcher mods. It started off with Witcher only, and now the current version has some, like, Skyrim and, and some other stuff in it as well. But it started off as purely Witcher, and it's just the most popular witcher monsters uh and uh, just a lot of things you face in the games regularly translated to D D 5e stat blocks and what a great resource really, for really dms too really who want to homebrew yeah. this stuff like even if you don't want to mm -hmm. run a witcher campaign you, you know there's uh, monsters are always something that you you fight mm -hmm. in normal D D. if you want to just throw something else at your players instead of the core uh D D creatures and yeah absolutely recommend it there's there's one for dark souls as well which is really fucking badass there's a lot of like, oh, dark souls cool. shit uh, and I think with Warcraft as well, like people do a lot of cool shit in their free time and like if you take the yeah. effort to like, kind of like research and look into these things, you can find so much cool stuff made by hobby DMs uh, just in their, in their spare time. It's, it's fucking great. It's fucking great. Good shit. Um, yeah. Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. That was that was that was Beanie's question, right? Yeah. Um, there was another one from the uh, the, the discord. Oh was Laura asking, uh, favorite mo moment of the one shot? And then follow up, how did you enjoy playing this class compared to your favorite regular D&D &D class? Okay, cool. Good question. Uh, Ismail, you wanna start? Sure. Um, favorite moment is kind of hard. Um, probably, <laughs> probably when Ismail, or REMZ and, uh, set we're just like munching on the road <laughs> <laughs> and he's and remz had some like paper you know in the mix with <laughs> yeah, she's like a just sharing everything yeah, with her nice. little mouse <laughs> <clears throat> mm -hmm. nom 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 yeah very nutritious <laughs> fiber <think>. you know <laughs> <laughs> i think my favorite moment would have had to have been not not even like a moment for me but the fact that i did that firewall and then Coin was like, I gotta go through it. I gotta go kill the Kiki more. I was like, This is my life now. I guess I'm he hurting. Got, he got <laughs> man, that fight, like that started. Also of that probably fight, made him smell better. I probably burnt off burnt off some of the like crusted up. Like that mix shit. of like burnt yeah. hair, but also some of the stuff is burning off of him too. Yeah. So it's like uh. He just like passes through the wall and then there's an explosion like he was covered in gas. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, like looking at like my favorite moments of the one shot, um, it's just I will never laugh louder than I did when that fight broke out and Koiba was just in like four different kinds of shit. He was in fog that hurts both at the beginning and the end of the turn. Hell. He was in a fucking cloud of locusts just nibbling at him. <laughs> there was this wall of fire blocking him from seeing or being able to, to fight the Kikimor, and he was also just like victim to the pheromones, so that could have Death also been really bad. Death by a million cuts. Yeah. <laughs> that he was in so much shit. It's fucking, ah, oh, dude, that, that cracked great. me up. Um, Beanie says, speak with look. dead gloss was a highlight. That was cool. That was cool. That was a cool little Yeah, that like, was really cool. Moment. Oh. <laughs> Laura, Laura's bag of magical makeup tricks. Oh, that, oh, that was... Man. What what a what a series of magic items. <laughs> it's yeah. It, she um, sent me uh, because I follow that that that's Instagram account, uh, the Griffin Saddlebag, and they do a lot of cool it's like items that they make. And um, like it's not always very D and D beyond friendly, but some of them are cool as fuck, man. It's super cool. Yeah, that was definitely really fun, and I love the description of like how the lip gloss was really pretty, and then it like leached the color. Oh, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. I love oh, Speak God. with Dead so much <laughs> it's dope it's super dope yeah you can just make it this like crazy necromantic thing or you could just make it like well this thing is animated now and it can speak you know <laughs> <laughs> um, um so the follow-up to that question also was <gasps> how did you enjoy playing this class compared to your favorite regular D, &D class uh we'll go with east Mara first i don't know if I have a favorite D D class. I uh, I guess probably mm, maybe Rogue is a favorite. I don't know. I really like Bard and Monk too. 
Um, <laughs> Into so, the Dexy kinds. Yeah, and I have a ranger that I'm kind of attached to as well. But it's it's all like part story, part the class itself. For again, my characters all have lore, so. <laughs> um, but it was it was really cool going into a class that had all of these inherent abilities and like just looking at the whole thing overall was just such an interesting class mechanically um mm. so that was really cool because almost every time i play like if i were to play even a bard which is like one of my favorites I, it would be like i was learning it all over again because it's been so long so it kind of was just like trying any other new class, except I kind of knew the world that this was from and how different it is from the D&D world. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I loved the, the potion aspects. <clears throat> I loved the, uh, the automatic, like, even if you have great charisma, you're still a witcher, you know? So yeah, people it was just, just don't like you. It, it was really cool getting to approach a character from a standpoint of like people are probably not gonna like me no matter what i do mm -hmm. or at least like at most they're gonna be tentatively temporarily trusting until the situation is done with kind of thing so i guess i guess what i could say is that going with a witcher class rather than thinking of okay how am i gonna be in combat it was okay how am i gonna move through the world as like a mm -hmm. person you know, so that was a definitely a difference yeah. right there. That's a, a cool aspect about it is about witchers is that like the people they they need them because there's a lot of bad shit out there that will just straight up kill them. But if they will never admit to the fact that witchers have a use and that they right. rely on witchers a lot, like they'll, nobody will openly admit that, or like ba 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 barely anyone will openly admit. Like that, it's ever. like a lot of people view us as like a necessary evil. Yeah. 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 Denny. Yeah, for myself, I do have a favorite class. Oh. And I I knew this even before, but recently on Twitter, uh, Dallas, who was here in the chat, made a tweet, a retweet from somebody else, you know, like listing the number of times you've played like, yeah, yeah, yeah. each class. <clears throat> and I wasn't surprised to find I've played five different clerics over the years. <laughs> Like and then like three was my next highest number in a few other classes, um, but yeah, clerics love clerics. It's uh, it's fun to have. Clerics are so multifaceted. You know, you can be, you could be the tank, you could be the spellcaster, you could be the support, you could be the healer. Um, but also to have kind of a relationship with a supernatural entity of some sort is very fascinating, and. Clerics are so mechanically well put together that I am, I'm like looking at, and after playing this Witcher as a spellcaster, I'm like, we need to do some serious reshuffling of how these mechanics work with each of these subclasses. Cause there's very clearly, this yeah. was intended for the Witcher or the Wolf subclass specifically. Yeah. 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 The it definitely felt or, that way. Or, or the bear one. But um, yeah, if you weren't going two-handed weapons, uh, you were kind of setting yourself at a bit of a detriment. Yeah, or do wield. I feel like it's also... Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't there. have a two-handed weapon, so I didn't get a blade style, really. Like, I put one down on my character sheet, but I was like, maybe she's small enough to two-hand a short sword? Like, but mm -hmm. I don't... I, I just mean, didn't even bother with that. I was like, you, we're just dual wielding. I, I would have allowed it, to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm trying to think of like the things that I've played. I tend to go for like up close and personal. I love classes that play up close and personal. I've I've played um <clears throat> played Blood Hunt. I think Blood Hunter is very cool. And it's funny because that guess what that class is based on? Matt Mercer oh, made Matt Mercer made that class and based it on Witchers, so I guess there's I a pattern love it. here. Yeah. Blood Hunter is basically the Witcher for in in D and D. Uh, Matt Mercer made the class, um, uh, like between Critical Role campaign one and two, I think, or like that's uh, campaign two, which is when when it got released because that um, mm -hmm. uh, Molly uh, it was Molly. a Blood Um And it's it was basically it was literally because they have like a whole like subclass that is um, 
uh, about mutants and you get to make mutagens and potions and that have a positive side effect but also come at the cost of a negative side effect uh the like whole like monster hunter like vibe you are really good at tracking down and killing creatures that are considered bad or evil or whatever um <clears throat> it is like i think at some point during during some kind of like uh may have been a, a talks machina he like said like yeah I, I looked at the witcher and i was like yeah i want i want witcher to be playable in ED, and that's how he came with the blood hunter so that's and so cool. I, that just happens to be the class huh. that i've played the most now and i love it i fucking love it because it's just like the whole idea of um just hunting monsters for a living man it's fucking cool you know really cool and currently i play in a campaign we're doing um tomb of annihilation uh with some people and that i get to play in instead of dm which is fucking great uh and i'm playing a blood hunter but i'm playing a, a dampier blood hunter so like i, I kind of went for like the monster that hunts other monsters kind of vibe it's fucking badass dude super cool super cool love blood hunters love them um well, i think blood hunter is the only class i haven't played and now i'm gonna have to give it a try and see if yeah, uh because be like, it's as yeah, close this as you'll this... get in cordian or in in like canon 5e of of playing i'm uh, not canon 5e but it's on the i'm just gonna play molly mock <laughs> <laughs> uh, i loved him cool. so super much cool class. um very very like versatile um subclasses are all really cool uh there's one subclass that's all about like you know i, I forget what i think it's i think it's something i something something of the the lichen where just like you basically become a lycanthrope of some um, of some capacity and that's fucking cool it's super it's super badass oh love it love oh it. i think that's what uh <clears throat> chetney is in campaign three uh, i think maybe no idea unless oh, he's a fighter the i don't remember yeah i think um no never mind i could be wrong but um there's a lot of cool uh, a lot of cool shit a lot of cool shit yeah um I wanted to walk you guys. That's all the questions I believe, right? That we have. Uh, I think yes, it seems so. I wanted to kind of. I have the the PDF open here for the Book of Beautiful Horrors, uh, version two point one, uh, and I wanted to kind of go through the monsters that you guys fought, and because you you there's definitely some stuff that they didn't use uh, because they I, I, a didn't get around to it, or b I was like, eh, you know, they're fighting three of the, the bad boys at once and these are definitely skilled to be a harder encounter so let's let's nerf them a little bit to, to make it a little more fair uh, so we'll start with the leshen right leshen uh we have some innate spell casting I, I i used uh insect plague once uh they could also you know polymorph if they wanted to or or, or cast wall of thorns which i considered to do that's kind of like a like a, an answer to your firewall. Be like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna fucking come yeah. to a wall of thorns, prick. Uh, now what? And then it would have burned. <laughs> yeah, just like away from the wall of fire, but just like like on the, the complete like opposite end of the of the uh, oh, mist, in case, mist huh? bank or whatever. It's kind of like lock people in. You know what I mean? That was kind of an idea I had. Um, they also have the ability I'm to so... put totems down and just teleport from totem Ooh. to totem, which is really cool. Oh, um, it's basically that's what they would do if you would go to like a legend lair. They'll have like all kinds of totems set up and they can just fucking pew, 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 just blink, That's so cool. blink to them. Um, it's just something like once a turn they can do. Um, they use 10 feet of their movement to step mat to step into one of the totems within reach and emerge from a second totem within its territory. So it can just, pew, 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 just fucking zoop around the place. Um, pretty cool. Uh, the root strike that it did, so like that like grappled uh, a couple of you. Uh, has like the the dragon breath recharge mechanics so at the beginning of the, their turn you roll a d6 and if they roll a five or a six they get it back and if you don't then they don't uh right. they also have the ability to call a primal beast twice a day which i decided to not use because there was already enough shit going on uh <laughs> so they can basically choose what to summon like what beast to summon uh it can summon either a 1d6 primal murder of crows uh, 1d3 plus 1 mm. primal wolves or 1 primal bear uh, and it works very much as a um, um, it, like, it has a mind of its own but it just like it will just defend the lesion uh, and it lasts for an hour or until killed be cool be cool um, I want to summon a murder of crows just to have them sit on my shoulders I mean oh man, crows, are, crows are dicks Crows, crows are, are not. They are smart, <laughs> friendly creatures. Nah, crows are dicks. I hate birds. I just don't like birds. I got shit on my head 
once while I was like on my way to school. I was so like, I'm Dutch. I'm birds. Dutch. We have more bicycles than people. So, you know, as a good, good Dutchie that I am, <laughs> ride my bicycle to school, right? I was like 15 or something. And I, st and I, dude, I'm still pissed to this day. And I was on my way to class. I had like the earliest class, which was at 8.30. And I was on the way, dude. It was a hot summer day, you know, no coat on, shorts. And I just get fucking this. I live. I lived in a in a town near the ocean, and this fucking seagull flies over and just fucking shits. On my, kudos for the aim, because I was riding my bicycle. You know, I wasn't standing still. I was going, <laughs> and it just it shits on my head. And I've hated birds ever since. Turned my ass around, went home, told my mom, "Listen, I got shit on. This is not my day. I'm staying home." And they were like, "Okay, that's fair. You know." <laughs> so I, I don't like birds suck <clears throat> sounds like the gull did you a solid I mean I guess solid in a too way. much <laughs> fucking hate him um, second creature you fought <laughs> was a, a, a Kikimore queen by far the tankiest in form of AC of the creatures you fought with an AC of 20 uh, they're uh, pretty fucking bulky very thick natural armor uh, they compensate that by having Low, lower HP though than um, I think the Leshen had uh, an average HP of 210. It's 20 d 10 plus 100. Um, the other guy, the the Ignus Fatus that you fought, it's like an average of like 180. The Kikimor Queen is an average H HP of 149. So it compensates for that, I guess. Right. Um, Just us throwing 27 damage at it like every turn. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, their pheromone aura, pheromone aura never succeeded because it pretty much it died quicker than it could actually really really use it properly. But basically, <laughs> if you would have failed that save, I can basically choose one out of three effects um, that will just like happen to the person falling victim to it. One is one is called aggression, which means that uh, the creature becomes charmed until the start of the next turn. Uh, a creature can choose to fail the saving throw with wishes while charmed by the Kikimore. The creature has advantage on melee attack rolls against any creature that doesn't have all of its HP. Um, if a creature saving throw is successful, it's immune to this effect for the next 24 hours. And because it's charmed, it basically, you know, it sees the Kikimore as a friend, so anything harming Kikimore will just be its target. Uh, so it gives you... it's It charms you, you fight your friends, and it just gives you nasty fucking uh, bonuses if you happen to target someone that hasn't been hit yet. Very cool. Um... There's one called Threat, which means that the creature becomes frightened until the start of its next turn. Uh, while frightened, it must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from the Kikimore. Um, very, you know, typical. That's pretty. That's a pretty typical like thing that happens in a lot of like D and D monsters as well that have the, a similar ability to that. Um, yeah. And there's one called Pacified, which is a, a charm, but it incapacitates uh, whoever fails a save. Uh, and it ends when they make the saving throw, and the mechanic here is that they can repeat the save every time they take damage. Instead of, like, at the end of their turn or whatever, it's whenever they take oh. damage. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, other than that, pretty standard, you know, they have a big mouth that they bite with, they have a big stinger that they stab with. Uh, the Kikimor didn't Tank really get to do much. swallow people. Yeah, the bite, if it, if it hits, um, if it hits... You have to make a saving throw or you're just swallowed and you're just inside of it and uh good luck with that although <clears throat> much to koiba's benefit yeah it was badass <laughs> <laughs> it was badass the third monster the uh, ignus fatus which is a type of foglet which are just the idea behind foglets is like they're like, they're like these undead ghoulish creatures that have like a little just like just a, 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 a typically elven spirit inside him that just happens to be pretty pretty mad at the world, uh, just a very vengeful vengeful spirit kind of thing. Angie. And the ignis fatus are just like the more powerful ones, um, I guess is a good way of uh, of putting it. Uh, the, you saw the killer fog ability, which I thought was pretty fucking badass, uh, because of the fact that um, it's pretty much cut based from the game. There's this fog; it hurts you over time, and you're in it, but also occasionally these like illusory fog foglets will come out and just fucking run by you stab you and then disappear pretty fucking cool um <clears throat> it would also have the ability to summon wisps uh 1d4 will o wisps will be summoned um and they just fight for the ignis fatus they'll just like, help them out and will o wisps like they sound like a bunch of like i don't know it's not a big deal but 
they are nasty little things, especially if you don't know exactly <laughs> like, how to deal with them. Like like the actual like ripped out of the D and D monster yeah, manual yeah, Willowisp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh they're, yeah. They're I've used them. Fucking annoying. <laughs> I've used them in my campaign, and there was a moment where one of the players went down, and mm -hmm. I was like, they don't know, but if it attacks that person, they're just gonna kill them. They're yeah. gonna kill them and take their soul. <laughs> Interesting. It's they're in awful. In ESO, Gross. there are wisps that if you kill an enemy nearby and a wisp like is aggroed shortly after, the wisp will take the body of the dead enemy and like yeah, fight I think that's kind of the that. idea, right? Like they will yeah. wisps like kill things to inhabit the body of whatever they kill yeah, because the will wisps are typically in most fantasy settings are like dead elves whose spirit has just not moved or whose like soul hasn't moved on and now just kind of roams around like looking for a body to fill essentially that's typically the angle that they get written in uh, in most in most uh, formats that have anything to do with fantasy um but yeah uh, the crone that you like met at the end is just like one of the big bads out of uh the witcher 3 that Geralt fights um i wanted to throw a star at her so bad i would have just gone straight through her <laughs> because she wasn't actually there it was just like a yeah, we were in a cutscene. of course though. she wasn't <laughs> Yeah, it was a cutscene. It was a cutscene, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, that's very cool. I try my best to, like, kind of mimic... Like, the, the voice acting on the crones is very fucking freaky, and I try my best to mimic it a little bit. Um, they're interesting, because, like, the whole bit about the spiel about, like, them protecting towns, but in exchange for sacrifices, that is all straight from the game. That is literally how they function. That is just... You see, like, you'll, you'll come across these, like, towns or, like, swamps, and you'll see these, like, strings with, like, a bunch of ears around them, which basically indicates that that is crone territory. Um, and every villager, every person you speak to regarding the crones, they're like, yeah, no, this, this is, we're okay with it. Like, we, they protect us. They wanted, you know, the occasional sacrifice. That's fine. And there's no brainwashing or nothing. They're like, this, they're totally okay with it. <laughs> it's just, they're fine with it. It's cool, man. Like, they keep us safe, whatever. They want a, a, a sacrifice? Uh, sure. Fuck it. They protected us and our genera generations past for so long. Who are we to decline? You know? And it's such a weird, like... A weird, like, concept. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because typically when they approach story arcs like that, in, in, uh, in, like, in, in most cases, it's like... They're too scared to do something or to, like, act out against them. That's not the case. They are totally fucking fine with it. Because it's like, because it's been going on for like generations, they grew up believing that this is normal. But it's like, like my that, parents uh... said this, my grandparents said this, their parents before them, their, then them before theirs, and, and, and so on and so on. There's like, yeah, this is yeah. normal. This is fine. Why is what? This is not a big deal. Why are you making this a big deal? It's like that, that study <laughs> with the electrified ladder and the monkeys and the bananas at the top of the ladder. The monkeys, sure. like, after generations, they learn not to touch the yeah. ladder without. Mm -hmm any of the original monkeys being there because yeah. they just know ladder bad <laughs> yeah i guess yeah 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 and uh it's yeah damn it's super cool it's a really cool villain. like the, the witcher 3 goes through several kind of like like story arcs i guess where you fight like really big bads um <clears throat> and the the crones plural it's uh it's there there's three of them I think, there's I think always three it's like, it's like a there can never it's just like a be one kind of thing <laughs> Yeah, I was time. like, and it, and it came up in the session too. I was just like, "Is this hags? Are we doing with hags?" <laughs> sort of. Uh, there, hags are a thing in The Witcher, um, and they're they are these like powerful, typically depicted as as, as female, uh, you know, very gross, fucking like saggy boobs hanging to their knees, like hunchbacked and claw like feet. It's disgusting. Um, that, that, but like crones are they're just like these these ancient witches essentially that have just become immortal and uh, they live they they are able to live on because of the sacrifices people make and in exchange they protect them it's a very mutual beneficial because like the people that they protect keep stay safe and they they can grow up and do their thing without ever you know nothing will attack their towns pretty much they're, they're safe from the monsters because the crones protect them but in exchange they get the necessary sacrifices they need to keep living essentially and then be able to use their magics but the first time you meet them they're like these like super pretty young women and they're like very beautiful butt ass naked and then they reveal their true forms and like the whole description of like the pointy nose crooked teeth like the flying nests for eyes kind of thing that is straight up just one of them like that is what she looks like and it's horrifying and there's 
Uh, there's, there's, there's two more, and they're just disgusting, gross. <laughs> each in their like own unique. Hmm. They, they are. There's three crones, and they're each of them are different, and but equally horrifying. It's gross. <laughs> um, yeah, and algols are just, you're very basic. Like they're very basic with your monsters. You see them everywhere, everywhere there, where there's death, and especially Witcher, Witcher three, which is like I, I kind of mentioned it. Like there was a war. Uh, not too long before. Uh, so there's still like a bunch of like just battlefields that are just strewn with corpses. Anywhere where there's death, there's ghouls just like. They're d just eating up the dead. Just getting a snack. Getting a snack. And they're uh, super aggressive, Roman packs, and it's. Ugh, gross. Um, that's, the, that's the monsters you faced. Uh, I have a question, right? For uh, the both of yous. <laughs> Excuse me. I was not ready for this. No? Yes, I will nope. be in your forever campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> You've made that abundantly clear. Right <laughs> <laughs> um, if I were, because, like, we got another one. Yeah, Bell, I know. Quick. <laughs> Lock the Discord. They can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, I've been thinking a lot about, about like, uh, we do one-shots occasionally, right? But I'm thinking, I'm considering making this, like, Witcher thing, like a, like a, say, next charity campaign, like, half a year from now. I'll probably do, like, a follow-up. Would you be down to, you know, pick up your character sheets once again and just, like, kind of continue further develop your, your Witchers and, and, and play around with them and, uh, yes. you know, stuff like that? Because I'm, I'm really, I, I love the Witcher and I had a lot of fun in that like Witcher like universe, right? In a, like a D and D type one shot for it, and I'm super down to make this like a recurring like like not like a I I'd say I'd say yeah recurring one shots I guess, but with like the same or group of Witchers that just happen to meet again and 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 work together and and do some other shit. That would that's be something really, you're really down fun. for. I'd absolutely yeah. love that. Be cool. Hell yeah. Bjorn will have a side business selling her own magic cosmetics. And oh, okay, 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 Laura. So Laura's not invited. Um, <laughs> we bring everyone, everyone ba back Wilhelm. with Wilhelm. Oh, hey, no. Wilhelm was funny. Beanie, okay. <laughs> Smelly man. <laughs> no, take it back. Let me play, Mr. DM. <laughs> uh, Wilhelm was found sleeping in the woods under a burlap sack and got stabbed. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, that's you know. Beanie said that that would happen to him if that was the case. So. <laughs> I'll live up to it now. Yeah, it's just like I I just have so many ideas, and I'm I'm a, when I have an idea, I'm like I need I, I want to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't like once my brain forms an idea that is more than just an outline. I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. I I have ideas now, and I wrote them down. Like, like this is fucking cool, and I want to do more of this. So uh, you know, I'll probably hit you up again in the future and be like, hey, let's switch your time. Yeah. I need a uh, redemption for the fact that R.E.M.Z. didn't use her dang cloak teleportation ability when she was being held by the Leshen. Oh. Yeah. I could have teleported to the astral plane for an action oh, and shit. then teleported back on my next action and been not grappled anymore. Oh, that's fucking badass. <laughs> I was too scared that if I did that, by the time I got back, everything would be dead, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Beanie asks, uh, entirely unrelated. How do you two feel about vampires? Because I know Beanie's been working on a vampire the masquerade type D and D oh. uh, thing. Ooh, that I would think, be really I fun. think I think that's the angle he's uh, he's going for here. I'm not sure. I've, oh. I've never played Vampire the Masquerade. <clears throat> uh, my only like exposure to Vampire the Masquerade is that like battle royale game in that universe, <laughs> uh, Blood Hunt. But uh, vampires is fucking cool. I love vampires. Vampires are dope as fuck. Well, Laura is speaking blasphemy right now. Yeah. Well. <laughs> You know. I, on an unrelated, weird tangent, mm -hmm. story time, um, yes. I despise vampires. Not like I can't <laughs> handle them in media, but I despise vampires. I had a girlfriend in high school who oh was just oh goth boy. as all heck. And oh in our music room, she was hanging with a buddy, and I was just chilling with them. We were playing guitar, and I he cuts his arm and she fucking sucks it. I was like, holy no shit, this is way. messed up. <clears throat> yeah. That is. So the relationship didn't last long. <laughs> That's. Yeah. See, no. That... No. Vampire is <sighs> gross. What the fuck? 
Like I've heard, Dallas, have I not told you the story? I've heard of that being like a, a certain like a oh. certain kink that people have. They're like, oh yeah, let's drink each other's blood. What the fuck? You know? It's that's, terrifying. That's, that, that, that's just not okay. I don't I don't I don't think I feel comfortable with no one having that in my brain now. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it, bud. <laughs> Thanks for vampires, Beanie. <laughs> <clears throat> That's too far. Total slut for vampires. That's too far. <laughs> oh God. God. Yeah, those Kill people exist. You've killed Dutch. Good job. <laughs> oh my God. I, dude, I've just gotten more sick over the past couple of days, and I'm, I'm yeah. vibing, vibing. Be out here. Uh, vampires stay in books, and Dutch, you get better. Uh, you can't tell me what to do. How dare you? <laughs> um. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> um, so, you know, Denny, I got you on the spot here, right? Mm. I got you now. You're my web. Can't leave. So about that uh, thing that we talked about a while ago of me, like, you know, making a guest appearance in your uh, little shindig, right? Like, is that still <laughs> on the table? Or, uh... we, I mean, I mean uh, we're currently <laughs> in the process of going through guests now. Uh, quick plug. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, no, I fucking plug the shit out of it, dude. Love it. Sure. I'm the DM on the Dicely D&D channel. I run a campaign on in the D&D 5, 5e system called Play Dicely. And, uh, I mean, we've been running for... I think we're just... We just finished episode 24. We're a bi-weekly stream. Um, and uh, we are in the process of having guests on the show now. We've currently oh, got yeah. guest Jesse Beam playing a rogue character. So, uh, at some point... I dungeon select family. You'll probably see some of your friends here on this oh, channel yeah. over there on our channel at some point in the future. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Can't wait, dude. I have ideas. I have character ideas. Well, we should talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Like, I definitely want to talk to you about that because I know that, you know, your, um, obviously, like, your world and your lore works a little differently than, than mine. So definitely got to make sure that we're on that same line of, like, okay. <laughs> um, I, and, and I totally, I love your guys' campaign and such. Like there is definitely a different tone of chaos that you guys embody that is just so good. <laughs> we're just a bunch of we're just a bunch of dickheads, really, and uh, that it somehow it works, you know. Um, it works. It's it's some people say it's charming. I think those people are delusional, but you know, like uh, whatever. <laughs> Call me delusional. D different tone of chaos is a very good way of saying you're just a bunch of fucking morons. You know, like, I'll take it. Like, thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> um, uh. This campaign is a lot more chaotic than last campaign, though. Like last campaign was was. Um, I mean, with everyone in the party right now is neutral. And that makes for a really interesting like dynamic because they're all really all in it for themselves, and trying to make that work. <laughs> the amount of times that I've had to like motivate them by a pay with a paycheck compared to last campaign is nutty. Last campaign is like, we shall do it because it's for the good of the good of the realm or yeah. whatever. And that's duty and enough. honor. This is like, uh, yeah, you know, saving an entire fucking province is cool and all, but like uh, that doesn't pay my fucking bills, does it? Like I. How's that my problem? You know what I mean? Like, oh, God. Hate him. Kind of is um, to my benefit if the province falls, because, you know, then where are the bills? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them ideas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, do you guys, either of you, have any, like, questions for me regarding the one shot or just anything else? Just, just out of curiosity? All right. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> So you you when when we got to uh, Yantra to begin like fighting the uh, the the three big boss monsters you had there, mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned, or through through the NPC we found that they were attacking at night. Mm -hmm. Did you end you ended up escalating those plans? Did Beanie uh, Dremond speaking into the ear escalate <gasps> their appearance? Yeah. That I that I figured that that would be kind of a. Uh, the town is under surveillance, like those ear things, like the, they're under surveillance. Um, one thing as well uh, is that um, the man you found in the alleyway uh, was the crone. Uh, so she had been there I... all along and you, you stabbed him 
and walked away. Like that, she was there the all along. The crow like, knew oh, that was watching. a mercy killing. Come on. So like she was there all along. Like she was there watching, just like and like okay. <clears throat> as soon and, as like, you just, just gonna see like a... the, the their like her like thing was like, let's see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when they, you started fucking with like their effigies, that's when that's when the monsters came in because she was like, okay, hold on, hold on. I I had that click for me when you said that she was coming out of the alley. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. <clears throat> yeah, because uh, I did mention uh, uh, that that the crone or like the, the, the manifestation of the crone came from that same alleyway. Uh, like walked out of that same alleyway, like same like... Not really an alleyway. It's like a small village, but like this, that space between the two the two buildings, right? <clears throat> the two collapsed buildings. Whatever, you know. Yeah, that was just uh, yeah. She was there the entire time, just watching, <laughs> hanging out. I guess I should say I didn't know it was a crone because again, not huge on mm -hmm. Witcher lore. But like when you said something was coming out of the alley, I was like, okay, either that dude was not what he seemed, and he we're about to have a much bigger fight, or. Yeah, like, I knew something was up because <laughs> I knew I knew it was the dude coming back as something else. Either like he had turned into uh, a a leshy a leshin, or he was something bigger. Because I was like, what if what if you killing him like accelerated something? You know? Yeah, that could have been. I could have been. Yeah. I guess I treated him appropriately hostile then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm, out of, I'm out of questions. I'm out of things that I really want to talk about. I think we'd, we'd be... It's like every every aspect of, of the one shot that I wanted to discuss with y'all. So unless you guys have anything more to say, um, feel free to, to plug the ever-living ever heck out of yourselves one more time and then uh, we'll wrap it up, I think. <clears throat> uh, go ahead, Yzmir. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think we talked about everything for REMZ and stuff, and like who she was and is. If we're coming back, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't plug myself good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, um, if you're into ESO or yes, Animal Crossing, an animal or just a very comfy vibe with a little bit of sass, uh, you should so call. Much sass. <laughs> you should I have a command. Follow Ismera on Twitch. When people tell me to hydrate, and it's it's Cheryl from Archer yelling, "You're not my supervisor," <laughs> <laughs> and only I can do the command. <laughs> That's fucking perfect. <clears throat> That's perfect. Yeah, go go. Click these links. Go, go, go! Check her out. She's great. Uh, I've only met her recently, but uh, it's, it's she's she's good people. So um, check her out. Denny. Well, as I just said not too long ago, I am Denny Dicely, the dungeon master on the Dicely D and D channel here on Twitch as well as on YouTube. Uh, we do a bi-weekly Sunday D and D game. Um, a bunch of my lovely players are here in the chat with us today. Um, and our next stream is going to be on April 3rd, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and we're just finishing up a dungeon crawl, so that likely means oh, some crawls. excitement. Love a good dungeon crawl. Uh, um, I don't do yeah. it often enough. Great. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm very proud of my Roll20 work on this one, so. Yeah, if you, dude, if you, um, have you, uh, quick sidebar. Have you looked at Tailspire at all? Tailspire. You know what? That sounds familiar. It's like a like a 3D board that you can build and like build like battle maps and shit. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty neat. Like uh, it doesn't have a lot of assets because it's 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 an alpha and I backed that Kickstarter like a f uh, years ago and I kind of forgot about it and then recently started using it for uh, for our campaign. Making the occasional battle map in it, if it's uh, you know, if it if it works, really fucking cool. Like it's um, <clears throat> like I said, it's kind of just like a 3D battle map 
the tool that you can make battle maps in and you can like have tokens that you as a dm can control and like walk around with and and stuff like that really cool pretty cool so yeah uh, i'm looking at it right now that looks pretty yeah, crazy pretty fucking good um <clears throat> a lot of times when they're like fighting a certain creature and it doesn't have that token yet i'll kind of just like be like yeah just imagine these are you know what i mean but uh because yeah. it's still you know early access and all that stuff they, they add new stuff all the fucking time uh, so like yeah, I recommend it if you're uh, you know if you want to play around with it a little bit and make some battle maps. It's uh, it's cool. It's cool. Very cool. Good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't like I don't fuck with roll twenty man. I don't. I as a player, it's a great tool to like just ha help you visualize what's happening around you. As a DM, I've noticed it fucking sucks. It's so hard to like set it up efficiently. As a DM, I'm like oh dude, I do I just don't care enough. You know. Do I really want an eight hour long struggle and headache for one map or do I just find something else? You know what I mean? Like I'll find something else. <laughs> way less effort, way less effort, way less headache. It's ugh, ugh, hate it. You know? <laughs> I got a comment yeah, about you by the way, Denny, from a, a friend of mine who was like watching along when we did that. Um, oh. You, and I noticed it myself as well. You're very animated in your face. And it's I fucking, get that it's all great. the time. <laughs> It's fucking great. <laughs> yes, I I, you, I am known to be animated in your face. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I this is a this is a fact about myself that I am very well aware of. <laughs> Unless he's DMing, then he gives nothing away. <laughs> yes, actually, that's that's very true. I very actively just like drop face and just like mostly sinister looks most of the time. Nice, nice, nice. Um. I want to thank you both for taking the time out uh, to not only be here, but also be the one shot. It was a pleasure uh, to, to play with you. It's Mera. Pleasure meeting you. You're great. You did great. Denny, Thanks. you know, knew, knew you a bit already, but uh, it, was, it was great to finally have you, uh, like, be in a game together and uh, have a little more interaction. You're both good people, and uh, definitely hope to see and hear more of yous. Don't be strangers and all that. Yeah. But we'll... Uh, thank you for having us. Thank well, you so uh, much. Yeah, this was really, really fun. I'm so glad that Laura reached out to me because hell yeah, hell yeah. I really needed my D and D fix. <laughs> well, <there you> go. <laughs> and uh, you know, whenever we uh, we do some some guest stuff, I'll definitely reach out to you because I know that you're uh, you're Please, definitely down yeah. for uh, for it. So <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening along. <clears throat> this will be on YouTube at some point whenever Bell uh, is done editing the, the the vod for the one shot first. So it'll be on YouTube within like the next week or so if I had to hazard a guess. Um, check out our YouTube, by the way, if you want. If you don't, if you don't want, still do it because um, fuck you. Woo! Um, I can't tomorrow. wait to relive the vod. <laughs> I think the YouTube command works, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, the YouTube's up to date. All of our vods are there. All of our dungeon, dungeon discourse vods are there. All of our uh, dungeons like plays vods are there. We played through the Baldur's Gate three. Um, Early access, uh, and now we're playing Divinity Original Sin 2, which is a fucking chaotic mess, and I love it. It's great. Um, which is, it's on hold now because Duke is uh, in America, but uh, when he gets back, we're going to pick that up again. Um, a lot of stuff Dang here besides America. D, &D y'all. Y'all should consider following the channel if you haven't already. <laughs> Yuck. Um, check out the YouTube, check us out on Twitter and all the good stuff, and check out these lovely people. Goodbye. Have a great evening. And it's basically the weekend almost. So yes. one more day tomorrow and then it's the weekend and, you know, good, good shit all around. Unless you're one of those unfortunate people that work in weekends, then, I mean, sucks to suck, you know, sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> so much sympathy, I love it. Uh, wow. <laughs> peace out, everybody. Have a great night. And Bye. Uh, we'll uh, catch Bye. you all later. Bye-bye. Bomb, -bomb, -bomb. bomb, bomb, bomb. You gone? Bom 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 do 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 dum. Now slowly like fade out. Just like bom bom.